are in a Snowy River multi-terrain SRT20. It's a couples van. Um, these guys actually have some uh, have two kids, but the kids are um, older teenagers, and um, when they drop their van off, um, the daughter was actually doing some driving lessons. So they're getting to a stage now where um, the kids might not necessarily be coming along with them for every trip or in the future coming along with them at all. So they got themselves a um, couple's van that is um, set up perfectly for them. So when they bought this van, they actually made contact with us um, after watching quite a lot of our YouTube um, videos on builds um, and basically had just said to us, go ahead and, and do a build for us. Um, here are the parameters that we'd like to stick, stick within. Uh, and yeah, so we went about doing that. And what we've, what these guys started off with was um, two 100 amp hour batteries, lithium batteries on the chassis. Uh, they've got a projector, uh, PM335 in the overhead cupboard. And they had three of the um, semi-flexible stuck down solar panels on the roof. So obviously with that, they knew that they weren't gonna take anything additional from the manufacturer, which is great. Um, and they just went about saying, you know, make a system that's appropriate for us. So they're not planning on being a heavy, like a, a quite a heavy consumer of electricity. So yes, they do wanna run their air conditioner for a short period of time. Yes, they do wanna run kitchen appliances. Um, but they're not going to be doing excessive amounts of energy use. They're also gonna be cooking with a barbecue outside on gas. So with this particular build, we have kept it what we would call a more conservative build, um, even though it's still 400 amp hour and a thousand watts of solar and can run the air conditioner. Um, it's definitely not as big as some of the other builds that we would normally do for people. Um, but for these guys, it's perfect. It's exactly what they were looking for. Um, so what we've done is put five 200 watt panels on the roof, taking the TV antenna off. So if they do decide that in the future, they would like some more solar on the roof, there is capacity on the roof for more solar at the front of the van on the slopes. So we can do that in the future if that's what they want to do. Um, the system is built underneath the L-shaped lounge here. And we've actually only taken up probably two thirds of the L-shaped lounge. There's a, there's a drawer here under the end, um, which still has a little bit of storage. In. We can take a look. So we've still got storage space underneath the end of the L-shaped lounge. Um, and you can see the system is installed towards the front end of the van, which as always we talk about is great for weight distribution, um, being centralized over the axles, which is what we try and always try and do. So that's perfect. So what we've ended up with in this van is we've ended up with an Enerdrive 2600 watt inverter, uh, a Lifetech 410 amp hour battery. We've ended up with splitting the solar array across two solar regulators. We've used Victron um, smart solars in there for that. And we've also given them the Cymarine package, which we would normally give to people um, that have this sort of system in their vans, which gives them the ability to monitor both channels of solar they can have a look at the DC-DC charger when they've got solar plugged in. Um, with these vans, we tend to uh, retain the projector unit as a 240 volt charger. Do you want to open it? So in the overhead cupboard here, we've got um, the originally mounted um, projector PM335. So, what that means up there is that it's quite a long way from the battery in terms of being able to do 
charging. Um, so we have to run a significantly sized cable to be able to do that. Um, so we have to redistribute to the PM335 anyway to get DC distribution from that because we're still utilizing that for um, turning loads on and off, um, tanks, um, all of those sorts of things, turning your pumps on. So we still utilize that, but we also utilize that as a 240 volt charger. With the charger being so far away from the batteries, and if you think about it, it's not that much further from where the batteries were originally. What can happen with that scenario is that if you don't put the appropriate amount of copper in, the charger will actually think that the batteries are full before they are. So they don't actually charge the batteries appropriately. Um, and that's quite common with these systems with overhead cupboard situations and batteries on chassis. So we've improved the size of the cable by probably threefold um, to that overhead cupboard. And because that actually has a solar regulator input in, built into it as well, we've retained that so that the client, the customer can actually use um, that for portables if they want to, as well as the inner drive DC DC charger that we've got there as well. So they've got two spots, two separate solar regulators to plug portables into, which will assist them in times of low light and all those sorts of things or parked in shade. So and that's- they can monitor that through the- Yeah, they can. As well, the portable solar panel? They can monitor that. Um, so in the overhead cupboard, up here, we've got our Cymarine monitoring package, which obviously offers um, the DC DC charger for your portable um, or your vehicle. And then your projector unit will display outgoing loads, incoming supply, uh, all those sorts of things. And then if you really want to, you can have a look at the old display up here as well, where the, um, where the projector unit is being monitored from. You can have a look at solar through that if you're using that as your solar regulator. So as we always talk about with these vans as well is there's a bunch of different types of air conditioners and we're, not, we're never really sure um, sometimes what's going to come on these vans. Um, seems to be whatever's available at the time gets installed. Um, so this is a Telair uh, air conditioner which is um, not a soft start version so it's not an inverter style. It's uh, basically an on-off. So with the on-off style air conditioners of this nature, we always install soft starters into them. That um, looks after the health of the inverter. Uh, basically with the inverters, the construction of the inverter electronically is not designed to be able to handle huge um, transient loading, which a compressor in an air conditioner does. So to soften that, for the inverter, for the health of the inverter, and even your main supply as well when you're on mains, um, we install a soft starter in there, which reduces the startup current from six times full load current, which is huge, mm. to two times. So it's a lot more gentle on startup. It makes less noise when it starts as well. So you don't hear that big <clears throat> on top of your roof, like the thing's gonna jump off the top of the, top of the caravan. So it's a lot more gentle on the whole system. So if you're going to spend that sort of money on a system, then you want to put some contingencies in place to ensure that it, it lasts the time. Yeah, correct. You definitely don't want to be um, stressing the, um, the electronic components, particularly the MOSFETs inside the inverter, by starting an air conditioner up constantly, turning it on, turning it off. So that's essentially it, guys. So yeah, many places to plug portables in, Really healthy amount of solar on the roof, good sized battery. We've actually been running the air conditioner in this van for a couple of days full time. And you know, over the course of the couple of days, we've reduced the battery down to about 37%. Dan, I actually came into the van this morning at seven o'clock and I think it was down to 38%. Yep. Um, I took some videos of um, the time and what solar was coming in, came back out at eight and then again at nine. And I think there was like, um, oh, I can't remember. I'll have to have a look, but we'll we'll put that video in. Mm. Um, I think it was more than it, it is now. What's now, like 10 o'clock or something? Yeah, we're um, in full cloud at the moment, though. Yeah, exactly. So we can drop some comparisons in.
summary of that is that if you set your air conditioner at an appropriate temperature um, for running, um, don't expect too much from it when you're running on battery. You'll actually significantly improve the run time for your air conditioner. Um, give it a chance to get cool in your van before you turn it on, all those sorts of things. That's definitely, that definitely helps your system get the caravan cool. Um, we generally always set these things to 24 degrees. 24 is perfect for the internal temp of your caravan. Um, it doesn't work as hard. Plus it gives your solar an opportunity to get some recharge into your battery once the compressor in your car in your air conditioner is actually switched off. So it's important to do that sort of stuff. Like I say, we've been running it for a couple of days. It's a very heavy consuming uh, air conditioner. It's, it's not efficient at all. So um, that just shows you with a system of this size that we can actually do that. It's not a, it's not a massive system by any stretch. You know, a thousand watts of solar, and a 410 amp hour battery is not a massive system. It's, it's a good size system, um, but the, even with that, you can still run an air conditioner for extended periods. You'll see when the thing wakes up. 62% charged, time and date, and how long you've got till it's dead, basically. Um, second page, working from the top, Solar one and solar two. So the yeah. top one is your 400 watts. Second one 600. is your 600. Yeah. Um, and you've got your car portable solar panel, which is the one on the side. Yeah. So when you're plugged into your vehicle, that'll charge up. If you've got a portable plugged in, that'll also show show some current. Projector. So this guy here is actually um, all of your lights. So I think that about wraps it up, guys. Any questions, don't hesitate to give us a text or a, or a message through YouTube or any on the social media channels. Happy to answer any of them anytime. Cheers, see you next time.